International Women's Day. Yes. Uh, and I know a number of things fit under that umbrella, but what is the, what is, how did Women's Day come about? Women's Day, a uh, hundred years ago, started out as protest, essentially, uh, among working class uh, factory women uh, about the conditions under which they were working. And in many ways, it always needs to come back to that, that if women are not treated in every field of endeavor with equality and equity, that's the point of International Women's Day. So since it started in um, sweatshops, I'm, I've always been puzzled by the recent uh, verbiage line that goes, uh, International Women's Day is all about elitist women, uh, middle class white women who presumably have everything are the only <laughs> women. <laughs> when I last looked, I'm black and my mother <laughs> observed International Women's Day and uh, she was black. Um, but it actually is, uh, it started very much as a working class movement. And it still is. It's a diverse movement. It's about all women, whatever their condition and circumstance. And so we still find there's a need and an interest to celebrate this day. There is definitely a need. And uh, uh, I am not embarrassed about the feminist word as long as women are making about uh, 70 cents on the dollar compared to men as long as there is violence directed at women and their children. Uh, in the present economy, we're being told, for example, that there are more increases in women's employment than in men's. Now, this isn't a competition. Uh, anybody being unemployed is a, is a problem. So men being unemployed is obviously a problem. But what this increase in the numbers of women doesn't tell us is this is mainly in the unprotected labor force. These are contract jobs with no benefits, no pensions, uh, mainly in the service industry, and um, it's, it's not a good thing. It's definitely not. So this year is an important year. This year is a year to say, uh, to tell the truth about what's going on at the present moment. So what do you have planned, or what do we have planned to celebrate? Well, uh, first let me say that everybody is invited to these events. And then our largest event, uh, well, I'll start with one that may not be all that large, but everyone is encouraged to come, the Pancake Breakfast on March 8th which is actually International Women's Day. Uh, that's when it is every year. <laughs> only there is only one, one 100th anniversary. So at 8 o'clock, everybody who is around the Mount is encouraged to come to Pancake Breakfast in the faculty lounge, which is in Seton at 404-405. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm thinking we won't run out of food. Uh, so faculty, staff, students, alums, people driving by, <laughs> come by and have some pancakes. Then our largest event will be at 4.30 on March 8th. And uh, it, it will be in the Rosaria Multipurpose Room, which is a very large room. So we want a lot of people in that room. And we have a number of items that we believe will be wildly entertaining. Uh, now, I'll, I'll tell you what they are, but this is a benefit event for women refugee students uh, currently at the Mount or that the Mount can bring. Um, 
This is through World University Service Canada. Commonly, and, commonly known as WUSC. Commonly known as WUSC. And the mount, because of uh, the special place of women in our history, uh, brings women students who are refugees, especially from countries where it's difficult for a woman to get an education. Needless to say, this is a very expensive proposition. And that's what we're raising money for. And uh, many performers have donated their time. The Women's Studies Department is providing food. So everything will be there. And all of the money, all of the donations that we get will go to uh, the women refugee students. So uh, I'm going to perform a one-woman play. I'm, um, I won't say primarily an actor, but uh, acting is certainly one of the things that I do. My play is called Smoked Glass Ceiling, and it will come as no surprise to people that it's about the glass ceiling. And uh, uh, the smoked part brings in issues of, of race and, and color, and how the glass ceiling operates in that case. Um, it takes me from my growing up in the uh, South in United States during the Civil Rights era uh, through immigrating to Canada and uh, various work that I've done. Uh, but it is a play, it is a one-woman show, and uh, it will have hopefully everything that a play is supposed to have. So that'll be almost the first thing that will happen. Uh, then we have uh, a wonderful lineup of poets and spoken word artists, uh, some faculty and students at the Mount, uh, others from the community, and their theme will be International Women's Day. And finally, uh, people can put their hands together for uh, Tom Collins' band, which features our own Greg Pretty, who is the head of audiovisual services. And that, of course, will be exciting and wonderful and uh, soft rock music. And there will be food and libations throughout. So spend the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day with us. 4.30 uh, on March 8th in the Rosaria Multipurpose Room. Any of these activities? Is there a cost involved? It's all free. Uh, we are asking for donations. We have a suggested donation for students and the unwaged of $5 and a suggested minimal donation for the waged of $10. However, if you don't have any money, we definitely want your money, but if you don't have any money, your presence is contributing. Because we don't want to ask a bunch of performers to donate performances and have empty seats. So showing up is also making a contribution. We also will be glad to take your money. <laughs>